GIMP has had its fair share of people targeting it maliciously, whether it's taking the project, sticking the name Pro on it, and then selling it on the Microsoft Store, which isn't illegal, isn't against the license, but it is morally questionable. Or a very recent thing that happened where there was a Google ad targeting GIMP users. So this first link we see here is the ad, and the second link is the regular GIMP website. And I don't think I need to explain this, but the way that Google does ads is incredibly dangerous. The only indication that something is an ad is this little bit of text that says ad next to it. There's no box around it, there's no different color, it's not using a different font or font size, it just looks like a regular result. And when you go to the website itself, it looks like the regular GIMP website. It's got the news here, it's got the GIMP logo, it's got a picture here. Basically, it is a carbon copy of the GIMP website. This right here is the way it looks right now. The only difference is there is a slightly different picture here, but from my understanding, they just rotate in different images every week, every couple of days, whenever they do it. And the only difference this website has is the domain. It isn't GIMP.org, it is Galimp.org. But if you're paying attention to the ad, you may have noticed a slight issue. It says Gimp.org, not Galimp.org. So clearly something weird is going on here. So when we are talking about domain spoofing in this context, there are two main ways that could possibly be involved here. The first one is called typo squatting. This method is pretty self-explanatory. There are ways to write a word that make it look like another word, and it's an easy mistake to make. For example, galimp.org instead of gimp.org, or paypay instead of paypal, or YouTube instead of YouTube. You just forget to include the E. And there is countless other ways this can be done. A lot of the time, it'll be like missing a letter or using a letter that is either very similar looking or adjacent to a letter on your keyboard. And that perfectly explains galimp.org, but it doesn't explain gimp.org. Clearly something very different has to be happening there. Well, luckily there is another explanation here. So if I show you these two domains, both of these look like gimp.com, but which one of them is actually the gimp.com URL? And you might be thinking, well, both of them. No, one of them in the word GIMP does not use a single English letter. This is known as an IDN homograph attack, with IDN standing for Internationalized Domain Name, basically Unicode inside of a domain name. This is why you can have things like emoji domains or kanji domains or Arabic domains and basically anything else you want inside of the Unicode character set. Now the problem with Unicode and the problem with having all of these languages across the world is sometimes you're going to see characters that look like other characters. And it just so happens that every character in the English alphabet, at least in the lowercase form, has a similar looking character somewhere else in Unicode. And in some cases for basic shapes like O and L and things like this, there are multiple symbols that basically look exactly the same. Now some fonts do a good job at trying to distinguish these similar looking characters, but a lot of them just don't bother because when are you going to see some Arabic next to some Katakana, next to some Cyrillic, next to some English? This generally doesn't happen, so there's no point putting in these protections. But on the browser side, it's a little bit different, because on the back end, there is already a way, you know, sort of built into it that protects users. So a lot of the older DNS don't actually support Unicode, and only operate within the ASCII character set. So to make these Unicode domains actually function, they are converted into ASCII with an algorithm known as Punicode. Now most browsers based on Chromium and Firefox will show users the Punicode form inside of the URL bar, but when it is just text on the screen, it is going to look like that spoofed domain. So does that mean this text we see on the screen is an IDN homograph attack on GIMP.org? Well, that would be a sensible explanation, but no, this writing of GIMP is the regular GIMP domain that a regular GIMP website is using. 
Now, I will fully explain this, but before we do that, I want to go to the next section, the download. So, as you'd expect from a website trying to impersonate GIMP, there is a download page. And for slightly off domain didn't set you off before, this should. No software project, especially any FOSS project, distributes the application through Dropbox. They will usually have a download link on their website, or in a FOSS project, it might be from their GitHub, GitLab, and things like that. If you see a Dropbox, be sure to go and double check you're actually on the correct site. And the binary downloaded here was analyzed by a Twitter user by the name of L. And they found it wasn't exactly the um, nicest of binaries. So upon downloading the malicious binary, you'll be presented with a 700 megabyte exe with the following hash. This file is actually 4.2 megabytes in size. It has been padded to make it look bigger than it actually is, and we can strip that with the following bash command. If a file has been padded, do not do anything else with it. There is basically no legitimate reason to pad out a file. The only reason why you would ever do that is to test the file limit of like an upload box, things like that. And that's pretty much it. Like it's for testing, not for distributing to users. Upon execution, it was obvious that this is Vidar, an InfoStealer Trojan via PCAP analysis. I was able to extract a zip which was posted to this IP address. And this zip contained fairly important things like say, over here, like say your login, password, the browser you were using, what site that was actually on and things like that. Basically, if you ran this, change every single password you have because anything that may have been stored in your browser is probably going to have been stolen by this. And if you throw this into something like Virus Total, basically Virus Total completely freaks out and is like, hey, this is probably malware. Funnily enough, one of the things that didn't pick it up is, um, is Google. <laughs> Which kind of makes sense considering where the ad is. Now, Vidar is not this crazy, super newsworthy malware that's going to take over everyone's systems, but it is still incredibly dangerous, and you do not want it to run on your system. Now, there was another variation of this website. Instead of being called Galimp, it was Gimp with two eyes, which contained a fairly similar malware. Like this one, the file contained the following data, a screenshot, cookies, save passwords, files on the desktop, system information, CPU, RAM, things like that. Basically, they are both InfoStealer malware. Now, as for that GIMP.org domain, this is not an IDN homograph attack. This is not a misspelling. This is actually GIMP's proper domain. So was GIMP's website hacked? Was it, like, taken over, at least temporarily? Was there some, like, weird open redirect vulnerability? No. This is complete incompetence in the way that Google manages their ad network. So this is from the GIMP official Twitter. Google ads allow for that by design, referring to using a different domain. And it makes sense to be able to display a URL with the actual one being used being different. The displayed one being your well-known one, in this case, GIMP.org, and the clicked on one being an obscure CM related one with IDs and such. So a great example of this is the way that I handle my Linode affiliate. So the link that I showed you guys is brodyrobertson.xyz slash Linode. But that's not the link that they gave me. The link that they gave me is this one on the screen. Which one of these gives you more confidence in what you're clicking? It's probably going to be that first one. And I'm not the only person who does this. LTT does this quite often, and a lot of other YouTube creators do the exact same thing. If a company doesn't give you a dedicated URL, you're probably going to go and just make your own. And in this case, Google allows you to go and set a domain on the ad itself, in this case, gim.org, and then the link you're actually directing to doesn't even have to be on the same domain. It can be any other website on the entire internet. This is a really, really bad design. What would be nice is if Google required some proof of ownership for the displayed URL. 
e.g. a token that needs to be put there like what they did for the search console tools. The way that Google seems to handle bad ads like this is they go out into the world and then either the ad expires or enough people report it for them to actually have a human look at it rather than just a bot. Because from a bot's perspective, it could seem like this is just a regular domain and nothing is out of the ordinary. But as we see here, you know, it is what it is. From what I've seen, the ad has now been taken down both of the domains, so that's good. Also, the domains themselves don't seem to point anywhere anymore, so that is also good. But this is not the first time and is not going to be the last time that something like this actually does happen. So have you had any personal experience with malvertising? Advertising malware. I didn't make the word up, it's just the word that people are starting to like throw around in recent years. Has it ever affected you in a personal manner or maybe someone you know who's not as, you know, computer savvy, who maybe got tricked by a Google ad into thinking it's a regular domain? I would love to know. So if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe to the Ribeiro Pay link in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robson Plays. That's going to be it for me. And I'm out.